Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to learn about blob storage. My name is Sushant Sutish and I'm your trainer for this AZ303 certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Azure Blob Storage is a service that stores unstructured data in the cloud as objects or blobs. Blob Storage can store any type of text or binary data such as document, media file or application installer. And the blob storage is also referred to as an object storage. Some of the most common uses for blob storage are for serving images or documents directly to your browser, storing files for distributed access, streaming video and audio, storing data for backup or restore, which include disaster recovery and for archiving, and storing data for analysis by an on-premises or Azure hosted service. And the blob storage offers three types of resources. The first one is a storage account. And the second resource is the container in the storage account. And the third resource is the blob in a container. This is an example diagram which shows the relationship between these resources. So within the storage account, you can group as many blobs as needed in a container. So now let's look into what is a container. A container provides a grouping of a set of blobs. And all blobs must be in a container. An account can contain an unlimited number of containers and a container can store an unlimited number of blobs and you can create the container in the Azure portal. So I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to go to the storage account, select an existing storage account. Under overview, you can click on containers and you can click on create a new container. So basically, you will start with giving a name. The name may only contain lowercase letters, numbers, and hyphens and must begin with a letter or a number and the name must also be between 3 to 63 characters long. The second setting is public access level. This specifies where the data in the container may be accessed publicly. By default, container data is private to the account owner. Within that, we have private blob and container. You can use private to ensure there is no anonymous access to the container and blob. You can use blob to allow anonymous public read access for the blob only. And you can use the container to allow anonymous public read and list access to the entire container, including the blobs. The next thing we need to understand is the access tiers within the blob. Azure Storage provides different options for accessing block blob data based on usage patterns. Each access tier in Azure Storage is optimized for a particular pattern of data usage. By selecting the correct access tier for your needs, you can store your block blob data in the most cost-effective manner. So there are three tiers, hot, cool, and archive. Let me explain you these one by one. So what is hot tier? The hot tier is optimized for frequent access of object in the storage account. Accessing data in the hot tier is most cost effective while storage costs are somewhat higher. New storage accounts are created in hot tier by default. The second tier is cool tier. The cool tier is optimized for storing large amounts of data that is infrequently accessed and stored for at least 30 days. And storing data in the cool tier is more cost effective, but accessing the data may be somewhat more expensive than accessing data in the hot tier. And the third tier is archive tier. The archive tier is optimized for data that can tolerate several hours of retrieval latency and will remain in the archive tier for at least 180 days. The archive tier is most cost effective options for storing data, but accessing that data is more expensive than accessing data in the hot or cool tiers. Please note that if there is a change in the usage pattern of the data, you can switch between these access tiers at any time. Now let's look into the blob lifecycle management. Lifecycle management policy lets you transition blob to a cooler storage tier to optimize for performance and cost. And you can delete blob at the end of their lifecycle. Then you would be able to define rules to run once per day at the storage account level. 
Additionally, you can apply rules to containers or subset of blobs using any using prefixes as filters. Now let's look into uploading blobs. A blob can be any type and size file. An Azure storage offers three types of blobs: block blobs, page blobs, and append blobs. And you can specify the blob type and access tiers when you create the blob. The first type is block blob which is the default type this consists of blocks of data assembled to make a blob most scenarios using blob storage employ block blobs and block blobs are ideal for storing text and binary data in the cloud like files images and videos then we have append blobs append blobs are like block blobs in that they are made up of blocks but they are optimized for append operations so they are useful for logging scenarios the third type is page blobs page blobs can be up to 8 terabytes in size and are most efficient for frequent read write operations and azure virtual machines use page blobs as operating system and data disk please note that once the blob has been created its type cannot be changed there are multiple methods to upload data to blob storage, which include AZ Copy, Blob Fuse, Data Factory, Import Export Service, etc. AZ Copy is an easy to use command line tool which you can use for your Windows and Linux. Azure Storage Data Movement Library is a .NET library for moving data between Azure Storage services. Azure Data Factory supports copying data to and from blob storage by using the account key, shared access signature, and service principle or managed identities. Blob Fuse is a virtual file system driver for Azure blob storage. And Azure Data Box Disk is a service for transferring on-premises data to blob storage when large data sets or network constraints make uploading data over the wire unrealistic. And Azure Import and Export Service provides a way to export large amounts of data from your storage account to hard drives that you provide and Microsoft then ships back to you with your data. And of course, you can use the Azure Storage Explorer as well. So let's look into some of the storage pricing methods. All storage accounts use a pricing model for a blob storage based on the tier of each blob. When using a storage account, Please consider following billing considerations. First, performance tier. The cost of storing data varies depending on the storage tier. Then data access cost. Data access charges increases as tier gets cooler. There is a per transaction charge for all tiers that increase as the tier gets cooler. And the charge only applies to account with geo replication configured including GRS and RAGRS. Outbound data transfer incur billing for bandwidth usage on a per gigabit basis consist with general purpose storage account and changing the account storage tier from cool to hot incurs a charge equal to reading all data existing in the storage account however changing the account storage tier from hot to cool incur a charge equal to writing all data into the cool tier that concludes this lesson in the next episode, we're going to learn about storage security. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.